Peggy 12. Oh. I'm a bird. Good evening guys, how are you? It's your man Shockland27 here and tonight I am talking about a game called Alter Beast. You know Alter Beast, not that one made from the 1990s. No, 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 we're talking about that one game that was deemed so mediocre by Sega that they pretty much just decided to cancel the entire North American release. Yeah, pretty much us UK and Japanese citizens were left of this game. Yeah, pretty much the game has been forgotten by pretty much everyone, but the one thing everybody can agree makes this game memorable. And it's by far the most viewed aspect about the game, literally with 11 million views as I'm talking. It has to be those transformations. I always wanted to have a chance to do a ranking video on it. So this is how I'm going to rank. First is brutality. The second is flair. And the third has to do with the impact. And with that out of the way, let's get this video started. Okay. You know, it's a pretty neat feature that after you've seen all the cutscenes, you're just going to get a collage of all the transformations and shit, just to save the player's time. I mean, you're able to just skip it by pressing the start button, but it's still very cool nonetheless, so yeah, that's pretty nice. So yeah, if I was to rank it, I'll give it a 4 out of 5, because you could probably tell that the devs pretty much put the most amount of effort into the werewolf, because of the amount of gross detail they put into like the guy's veins for the eyes and for the hands crawling out hands and shit and with how like how the werewolf body literally just like almost rumbles which compared to the whole full body view cutscenes that every monster has in this game is definitely the most detailed so yeah you can tell probably because the werewolf is the most iconic beast of the entire franchise so they didn't pull any expenses at all with it Okay, so now we're going for a Caesar! Monkey! Monkey. So overall, my thoughts with the Wendigo is that it's a surrounding meh 
So it was pretty much a 3 out of 5. Like, I do like the idea of the whole Arctic monkey thing, but this rule has what I've hoped it was. It's kind of meh. It doesn't seem as painful. I guess it could be considered painful with the whole sub zero temperatures because your body covered in ice is absolutely painful. Just from a visual standpoint, it just doesn't really seem that interesting. It shows how boring and lame monkeys really are. They're just a bunch of stupid primates. <laughs> Okay, so now we're for the Minotaur. So if I was to describe the Minotaur, I gotta give it like maybe a 3.5 out of 10. I know the first of this kind, but it's because in terms of transformation, it's pretty cool actually. But it kind of went a bit further. It's just like the Wendigo in the sense that, yeah, it's about the pain of being on fire, but kind of doesn't really leave you clinchy under your skin with the visceral nature of the uh, body horror. Century. But man, I do think the whole concept of the flaming Minotaur is so damn badass and cool that I just gotta give it some props, so I give it like a 5 point extra to it, so yeah. So here we go for the Dragon. You know, I'll describe this in one word, and that is EPIC. That's how I describe it. And it makes sense because it's a motherfucking dragon. And dragons are epic creatures, so of course the dragon gets probably the most pizzazziest, yeah, pizzazzy transformation in the entire game of the lightning bolts and everything. Like watching this shit with a surround sound and then the lights are all dimmed down. It's like a mini spectacle to behold. It's awesome. I just wish that the actual dragon itself is really as awesome as it is in the cutscenes because in game it is terrible. Oh yeah, the score is uh, 4 out of 5 of course. And now time for that eagle.
So this one is kind of tricky because one hand I do find them all very solid in the sense that it balances both the brutality and the kind of beauty of the animals trying to replicate with having some of the most like glorious transformations in the game like with the one in the arm and shit with the feathers coming out of the guy's arm absolutely squeamish looking especially the part where his mouth literally turns into a beak absolutely gruesome shit with the teeth flying out it's absolutely brutal i love it but then i'm also like the whole beast design of the animal looks kind of lame in my opinion when you see its full form so for me i gotta give it a 3.5 out of 10 3.5 out of 5 empty same 10. it was this close to making it into a 4 out of 5 but the base design again it's just so mid Damn, Sega. Now we're going for the hidden ones, and now I'm going for the Boston Bruin. Yeah, this one has to be an easy 12 fight because my god, this whole grizzly bear thing. Is... Nothing about it really interests me at all, it just comes across as very kind of mid. I mean, like, the only one I kind of liked was the part where you see the grizzly shake its head a bit after forming its face from that rock. But besides that, every single one of them lacks impact. And it just comes across as very kind of meh. Like I thought I'll see something did more like brutal looking. Instead it's just kind of mid. The fact that this bear is able to literally do kung fu kicks makes it even more funnier. <laughs> but anyway, we're going for the motherfucking martial. I had no idea that the one alien character could be so shit. I mean, he's literally a. So I don't get it. Yeah. Need I say more? Need I say more? Need I say more? This is a, uh, honest to god, the first 5 out of 5 monster in the entire game. In fact, spoiler, this is the only 5 out of 5 monster in the whole game, and it's a fucking Martian, so technically speaking, it's not really Altered Beast, because through the game's own lore, 
the, the, the scientists literally just dug out some remains of an alien and decided to just put it into the whole Ultra Beast program for the, you know, just for the lows and shit. So now you got this really odd world being, being able to literally just teleport as you can see here. Like rolling around through the speed of sound. Like I'm literally sawing the fucking hitchhog. It's really weird ass shit like that. Well, you know what makes the transformation so goddamn god tier has to do with the... Damn, like they went super visceral with the whole transformations on them. Like the way you literally see the guy's own face, like little muscles and shit in extremely highly detailed fashion. Like this is something super unheard of because even more comic games do not go this far and extreme with the gore. Yet here's this one obscure 2005 game where you can literally see the veins and arteries of the human body in extremely, like, disturbingly accurate detail. And then you see how his fucking skull gets all fucked up so it can form the UWF piece or whatever. It's really creepy shit like that with the eyeballs and shit. It really gets under my skin. <laughs> under my skin. I have, I have two problems. It hurts. So seeing that makes me cringe like crazy. So seeing that, seeing all those teeth, like, combust out of his mouth really just adds a lot to the brutality. It's like, holy shit, I never noticed it until now. It's like, holy fuck. Sega didn't even go this hard, but they did. And then you see the part where, he, where he's in his full body form and he just seems to be, yeah! while like stretching shit, really letting out that battle war, really showcasing just how absolutely powerful, like how much of a beast he is. In fact, I gotta show what I mean because I saw the ability this thing's able to do. It literally blew my fucking mind. But dude, I gotta give credit to the music because this music really makes me feel uncomfortable but kind of at all at what I'm witnessing here with how alien this thing is. So it does its job very well. It's the most interesting out of the beast. See what I mean? This is why this guy is the go-to of Ultra Beast. This motherfucker don't miss. No, he's fucking good. That motherfucker don't miss, man. He's good. Okay, so enough gushing over the alien. Now it's time to see the cutscenes for the weird tiger. Okay, I gotta wrap this up, so now I gotta do the merman, but first... I gotta fight this giant enemy rat! Oh god!
So yeah, this one gets a 3.5 out of 5. I was about to say tender. 5. And the reason why I'm saying that is because, like, yeah, I do gotta admit, though, in terms of grossness factor and the gore and presentation, it's definitely the... It's definitely up there. With how it deals with the whole, like, skin getting peeled off thing to reveal the water creature inside them. Really visceral shit. I love it. I don't got much to add to the point. I just thought... It looked really cool, so without further ado, we're now finally going to the end of the video, which is the rankings. Let's do it! Yeah, this one you can tell that they just had to call it a day because all they did was just essentially reuse in-game cinematics and just called it day. So yeah, it's very deserving of that 0 out of 5. Next! So yeah, the bear one kind of left me disappointed. I thought it would be a lot more intense considering the creature. Instead, it just came across as pretty flat. So I'll give it that 3 out of 5. Except for the way that guy runs like a dumbass. <laughs> so yeah, for the monkey, I thought it was alright. kind of liked how it went. It didn't really leave much of an impact except for when it did that really derpy face expression. But besides that, it's alright. It's solid. I have to give props for this one because this one definitely is the one that gets me grossed out the most with the skin falling off and stuff compared to other ones. So yeah, this one, like the Rindigo, is a solid pick. Yeah, this one is just really, really cool. It's the last of the ones I consider it to be like solid. Like, I just like how visceral the transformations from the wings coming out of the guy's arms to the guy's teeth coming out to form the eagle's face. It has a great mix between being both pretty and just very damn violent. So to me, it's a very enjoyable piece to behold. This and the next picks are the ones that I consider to be in their own category of just being more of a spectacle more than anything else with them beast being the most like mythical out of the other ones in the whole game. So their transformations kind of reflect that with it being very like over the top and stylish and filled with lots and lots of flair. It almost like mini events with whenever it transforms so but compared to the next one it's definitely kind of weak in my opinion still again it's good yeah the reason why i got this one up so high in the list has to do with the spectacle well crush the belt the lightning bolts the presentation the fact that it fits really well the whole eternally overcast weather background that the game has gives it a certain atmospheric vibe to it like you're witnessing something quite majestic with it being transformed it just really sells the fantasy of transforming into a badass dragon so it really does go hard so yeah cap this one definitely has to be the second best in the game and that has to do with the fact that 100% sells the horror of transforming to a beast better than any other beast in the entire game because damn with how painful and graphic the whole transformation goes you legitimately feel bad for the guy as you can just tell the guy he's not enjoying it at all with how absolutely just gruesome it goes like damn it really does make me feel uncomfortable looking at all these cutscenes but then that's what makes it so damn phenomenal because this game is a horror game so it really does sell the fantasy of the whole werewolf being like a cruel parody of the human body you have the uh, body shape of a human but you're pretty much more, more of a beast than man so the horror is pretty much having that sense of humanity with being violently stripped away from you it just gels well with that legend of the werewolf really well Yeah, well, this one has to be the biggest hit of the entire game. This one, you can just tell they had the most fun with. Because, my god, this one had no right of going so damn hard. Yeah, it goes so damn hard in terms of everything. 
on its visuals, the presentation, the music, even the fucking tingle theme goes so fucking hard with that. <laughs> That whatever the fuck tire instrument they use, it goes so fucking hard. It, it's so nice. That's how I describe it. The whole transformation sequence. It, it it gets me hyped every time I watch it. But I feel bad. I just watch a clip of this guy getting his entire organs getting twisted into a fucking organ transplant. I don't fucking know what happens. It's just, it's just so fucking rad and gross and yet so cool. It makes me intriguing. I always repeat that shit. It makes me go, what the hell? What the hell? Whoa, this is so weird. It really sells the idea of you turning into an alien and a bunch of bored scientists decide to just cook off from some graveyard. It's so damn... Oh my... Hi! Hi! You know, that's just how I gotta say, man. Like, bro, can't stop gushing over this dude. And the funniest thing is that after that bass transformation, you're left with a really creepy-ass character. Legit the creepiest thing in the entire game. Because despite how absurd the close-up of the creature's face is in one of his transformations, having that weird mouth thing, in-game, it never once opens its mouth. It only looks exactly like how you see in this pic here. Just cold. It just has no eye. It has no face, essentially. It's just a, like a Pathion energy, essentially floating around. It has the most unnerving theme in the whole game. Like legit, I feel at all whenever I use this thing. Like this thing literally is art. It is art! It's such an underrated aspect of this game that feels tragic that it's the only time you ever see this thing be used in a game. You're not gonna see a uh, UWH because Sega decides to just abandon this franchise and will never remaster this game, so this game's left in the dust. God damn. So pretty much I just wanted this video to be an homage to this game that game despite its flaws had some really really cool themes that's going for it. like with its atmosphere its music the transformations damn the game needs a bit more love for that not to mention it's one of the only games to blend in like literal pre-rendered cutscenes into the game itself so you get it never really takes you out of the action because the amazing thing is that literally you can always skip the cutscene so it doesn't break the flow of gameplay. It's really impressive. As it really does push the PS2 hardware to its limits without actually harming it. Unlike Killzone. <coughs> well, that's my Altered Beast video. And I gotta say, this video took a lot longer than I anticipated. But I did enjoy making it. I just want to give the game some spotlight. Because I consider this game to be very underrated. And needs to have a bit more appreciation for what it managed to do. And push for the system itself, not for the industry, more like for the system itself. And it's more of like a reminder as to like the bygone era in which almost any IP will be able to get like a double A release or something. Because nowadays in today's gaming, we do not get that luxury to get games like this anymore. It's either going to be a like an indie game or a triple A game. The age of double A games are long gone, and this game is just a part of that era where developers they just took risk and just went for it even though it didn't really go well for example like this game didn't really go well for the game they still went for it they went for something very bold with making altered beasts into a very m-rated like give it a very m-rated take and they actually went for it full throttle they did not give a shit they want a mature audience they sure as hell did at the time because man, this game, compared to the original, makes the original feel like you're playing through a cartoon. Like, holy shit, this game is really impressive for what it did. But yeah, after this game, we haven't really gotten any Altered Beast games anymore. More like just cameos in the form of like those Sonic All-Star Racing games. Like, I don't think anybody cares about those games. I mean, those games are fun, but Sega doesn't care. But yeah, that's it for the video. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like, comment, sub. That would be amazing. For now, I'm just going to like rest for a bit because man, oh man, this video took me a while and it's taking a lot of space from my hard drive. So I'm just going to like cool it down a bit with this type of video content. I mean, I haven't worked hard on the video as much as like that Ninja Gaiden Z Yaiba game. So yeah, I don't know what type of project I'll do. That'll be up to this caliber, but it certainly won't be for a while, so yeah, I'll see you guys.